Today, I'm, I'm going to try something a little different, and so I don't have a lot of time to talk to you about my personal background, because that becomes a whole new speech, so I'm going to try to make it nice and short. Uh, my name is Chris. Nice to meet you. Uh, I grew up, I was born in Denver, Colorado. I grew up around a place called the Tri-State Denver Buddhist Temple. We are Nishi Honganji, Namami Dabutsu. I grew up in a Japanese-American community. Uh, playing taiko, and we have bondori that I play every year. There's just regular old taiko. Uh, to be honest, the first two years that I played, I actually really did not like taiko at all. It was mostly my mom just being like, oh, just like go, just go, do something, I'm busy. And so I <laughs> went and played taiko. And I just found that over the years, I, I wasn't able to quit. Taiko had become so much a part of my identity that if I didn't have taiko, there was nothing really that made me, you know, Japanese, or there was nothing that really connected me to that, that community. I was always Chris, the taiko player. So, uh, anyways, I was probably about uh, 14 years old when I decided that I was going to become a professional taiko player. And a uh, chance encounter when I was about 17 years old with my current, uh, with my current mentor, my current shisho, uh, set in my mind that I was going to join this group called Amanojaku, Taiko Shudan Amanojaku. And uh, like I said, that was a very long journey, 17 years old. It took me maybe uh, three years, three and a half years to actually get to Japan. Uh, and then even then, the journey wasn't very easy. Um, when I finally did get to Japan, um, I really had no idea how I was going to do what I had come here to do, which was basically to learn taiko from Amanojaku, uh, take that back to my temple in America, and try and kind of reinvigorate the community there. And I didn't really know how to do this or what I was going to do, and I had you know, nothing. I didn't have money or a plan or a visa or a job. Um, I had a great girlfriend, who's now my wife. <laughs> uh, anyways. <laughs> So I, I kind of led this life. Do you guys know that TV show, uh, Ichimai and Seikatsu? Yeah. That's how I studied to live. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, I watched that show, and there was this guy. There was a river down in, like, the Omote Sando area, and this guy was getting daikon, like, yase, like, daikon out of the river. And I, I'm watching, taking notes, and... Uh, I did that, so I went to Harajuku, and I looked around for about three hours, and I found these daikon, and I pulled them out of the river. And I didn't have train fare to get home, so I bust out of ukulele. I did a street live, and uh, I didn't make any money, but... <laughs> Anyways, uh, the problem that I see, why am I telling you this, is because I've come to Japan, I have this vision, I have something that I believe in, that I think is great, that I think everyone should be doing, and I think that it is... You know, this amazing part about Japan and Japanese culture, and yet I can't make a living doing it. Like, I have to be pulling daikon out of a river. Like, um, but then I can turn around, and because I have this face and I have an American passport, I can, uh, I can teach English, and I can make a pretty good living. I can make pretty good money doing that. But I don't have to have passion about English. I don't have to have passion. I don't have to have education about English. I can just do it because... <laughs> uh, so I'm, well, I'm pushing time. Um, so I, I, was, I was asked by Segi originally to be a performer, uh, and then we were just talking, and I kind of became a speaker. I don't know if that happened. Uh, so this was two weeks ago, and for about my issue, I was like really bad. I was stuck. I couldn't think of anything. And then one day, I'm walking home in the rain. And I start rapping to myself. And uh, I kind of came up with my speech. So, ma, konna ni suborashi speaker no katagata no, ma, katagata wa iru naka, jibun ga honto ni speech sase te itadakere nante, ma, honto ni koe, koe ni omoimasu. I think uh, I'll try my best to. I, I decided to do a, a spoken word. The spoken word 
っていうのが、まあ、ラップみたいなラップのようなスタイルなんですけれどもなぜこのスタイルにしたかっていうとなんか自分らしくやらないと本当に皆さんに伝えたいことが伝わらないんじゃないかと思ってあの、まあ、今日スポーケンワールドでスピーチをさせていただきますよろしくお願いしますはい。English native speaker and pop culture naysayer. <laughs> Lover of Japan and all that I do, wondering what Japan will be if it ever loses you. I'm not a genius inventor. I wasn't even top of my class. I stand before you today, a looking glass. I know if you saw Japan through my eyes, you would love what I love and despise what I despise. The Japan I love is beautiful, not the crazies that make Akiba unusual. Its beauty is found in culture and tradition. Both are disappearing, but that's where this comes in. We need a shift in values and a shift in consciousness. Japan plays a dangerous game as it walks the cultural abyss. Every child in Japan needs to play taiko. Get them started young and have them play through high school. The shift starts now and it starts with a few. If you don't know Japan, then you don't know you. Eight in ten of the children I know can't bend at the waist and touch the toes. After running 20 meters, they huff and they blow. Their fitness level ranks as low as it glows. Their fingers are fast as they blast past the last level, a generation of children who are warriors on the Nintendo. They might be the man when they're an avatar on screen, but have no concept of what hard work and integrity mean. In the gaming world, they save the princess, but then turn around and bully the girls at recess. When battling online, they can't be elite, but they never learn to stand and give the elderly their seat. You see, if they were in a taiko group with elderly players, they would know that backs hurt and they have needs you must cater. A generation of child Nintendo warriors, knowing nothing of struggles of those who came before us. A generation of children closed off in their digital zones, unaware of the realities of flesh, blood, and bones. If they played taiko, they would know hard work. They would know dedication and know what it took. If they played taiko, they would know blood and tears. They would know how to sweat and the bitterness of years. If they played taiko, they would know they weren't alone. We play together, laugh together, fight and eat and train together. We keep our commitments no matter the weather. We need a shift in values and a shift in consciousness. Japan plays a dangerous game as it walks the cultural abyss. Every child in Japan needs to play taiko, get them started young and have them play through high school. The shift starts now and it starts with a few. If you don't know Japan, then you don't know you. I came to Japan when I was 20 years old. I had no money, no job, no visa, no home. I had only two bags because I had sold all I owned. I walked up and knocked on the taiko office door, and for the next two years I slept on the floor. Life doesn't make it easy to get what you aim for. But Living in the office taught me patience and trust. I learned kindness and strictness are painted with the same brush. At the office, I heard many words for the first time Kizukai, Omoyari, Regi, Gaman. Almost no one plays taiko, but those who do are taught by people who love what they do, but have to work harder than most just to get by and eat food. They're passionate and creative. They live and breathe what they do. They dream, shed tears, and break their bodies for their crew. They'll bend over backwards to share this art with you. We need a shift in values and a shift in consciousness. Japan plays a dangerous game as it walks the cultural abyss. Every child in Japan needs to play taiko, get them started young, and have them play through high school. The shift starts now and it starts with a few, because if you don't know Japan, then you don't know you. So, parents, When you're standing around choosing a role model for your children, I ask you to choose a taiko player with passion and vision. A foreign language teacher should come as a second decision. First, you need to know who you are and where you come from. If you can't do that, then in the world's eyes, you are no one. You have to know how to stand on the world stage and scream, This is who I am! This is the core of my being! You play baseball, take hip hop and hula class too. But if there's nothing Japanese about what the Japanese do, then where does Japan go when all that was is gone, when there's no one left to play the traditional songs? My teacher knows all of five words in English, but it wasn't his English that made him friends. 
It's because he knows his root, has passion, and his skill on the taiko knows no ends. This drum has brought him to over 50 countries. He has friends on every continent and thousands of students. Taiko made him unique. It gave him his being, and he traveled the world knowing that he couldn't be beaten. We need a shift in values and a shift in consciousness. Japan plays a dangerous game as it walks the cultural abyss. Every child in Japan needs to play taiko. Get him started young and have him play through high school. The shift starts now and it starts with a few. If you don't know Japan, then you don't know you. And when you find out who you are, hold on, don't change it. I see so many people sell out just so they can make it. Taiko players wearing kung fu shoes, swinging around weapons like they're doing wushu. You know, doing their hair like they're anime heroes, trying to look cool and Asian, afraid to be zeros. Rocking out on taiko with hip-hop and rock beats. Did you forget who you were? Whose standards are you trying to meet? I say I play taiko and people always ask me, so, so when you play, do you wear fundoshi? I tell them some French guy said fundoshi sold tickets, so a famous taiko group made it their uniform. That's how legit that is. Don't change your traditions to meet Western needs. Have pride and confidence and never heed the words of someone who smells of money when they breathe. Now, to ignore good musical ideas is to be closed-minded. Don't be closed-minded, but don't be short-sighted. If you sell out the image or conform to a trend, you'll be left with absolutely nothing in the end. Remember where you come from, and then only here and there, add in the good things coming from the world to your ear. We need a shift in values and a shift in consciousness. Japan plays a dangerous game as it walks the cultural abyss. Every child in Japan needs to play taiko. Get him started young and have him play through high school. The shift starts now and it starts with a few. If you don't know Japan, then you don't know you. Playing taiko made me my own businessman, my own visionary to answer my own demands. Always striving for better, hustling for cheddar, I endeavor, I never get far from the things that I treasure. The measure of man's worth is his word, he can't fight it, he can only be honest, keep his word and stand by it. So when you get out there and the world screams at you, what are you? Who are you? Why should we care? You answer. I stand on the shoulders of giants. Follow me if you dare. Who am I? You might ask. Who's this foreigner telling me? What's this place telling me who I should be? Why does he know how important my tradition and culture is to me? Who am I? Who am I? I'm just a taiko player, Japanese taxpayer, <laughs> English native speaker and pop culture naysayer, lover of Japan and all that I do, wondering what Japan will be if it ever loses you.
Thank <laughs> you.